want. It's just that we can't, um, like, if you say something, like, you're not going to be able to get picked up and no one's going to see you. So if we talk to you at all, it'll be kind of like they won't have any idea what you're saying. So we're going to ignore you. We're going to act like you're not there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, yeah, no, it's kind of good that you're sitting here, though, because I, I wanted to start off talking because uh, we started last night. Um, you know, we did this is technically the second podcast, but we had some technical issues with the other one. Um, but one of the first issues we talked about, or the first things we talked about, was like transitioning into adulthood, and how old or how young and childish you have been ma- making all of us feel because you oh, like me? skyrocketed into like adulthood like overnight, and then you know I'm older than you and I'm still like a child practically, um, and that what started that was uh, we saw your tweet and your your video where you had traded in your sports car, which is like. I feel like, you know, from a woman's point of view, it's like when you get a man or something like that, that's like that's the mark of like, OK, this is family dude now. He's no longer a bachelor running around with his boys. You know, we got him to trade in his sports car and, yeah. and get the family friendly car. I'm planning out my midlife crisis. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you know, I was like a Charger scat pack. Like we could go bigger later in life. <laughs> I think was it the Corvettes are the biggest midlife crisis mobiles. Yeah, but we get we wouldn't go full like dad midlife crisis. I, we'd get something cool like. My dad bought a Corvette. <laughs> um, yeah, see, see, that's like that's like dad, like the dad mobile. I mean, I don't no disrespect to people who got he sold a suburban and got a and got a Corvette. We made fun of him for it. I just because like my like forty year old brother was like, Yo, you should, you, like when I got my Charger, he's like, Yo, you should have got a Corvette. I was like, what? I was like, I'd look like a straight dad just rolling up. Yeah, I mean, my I wife like just left me. She got the kids, the Corvettes here. Yeah, well, yeah, well, eventually what you do is you get the Corvette, and then whenever you go somewhere, she just follows you behind you in the family <laughs> car. Good film. Yeah. Good but, nice uh, cinematics. But yeah, no, I was excited to get you on here because uh, you know, last night we, we, we wanted to test out all the equipment. And me and Ham, we talked for like an hour and a half, two hours. Um, I was like, the original idea was to cover all the most controversial topics. Because I figured this is my first podcast and that, you know, people didn't really get to know us, us yeah. through like stupid videos and vlogs and, and troll videos and things like that. Same. <laughs> Um, so like it would have been really cool for them to actually kind of meet us. So I wanted to get out and talk about all the politics and religion and all this crap. Um, and it ended up just being really, really boring because Dan was a little drunk and he doesn't know anything about that stuff. So I would say stuff and he would go completely out the window. Oh, I'd be sober saying the same thing. Like what? Yeah. I, I don't know. And I, I was sitting there editing and I was like, this is, this is boring. Who cares about what yeah. I think about any of this stuff? So we're skipping all that because I just, I just felt like it would be silly. Um, but yeah, no, I like sharp, sharp, the departure of sharp from, uh, the team house into the sharkly, um, as someone who hasn't reached adulthood, you know, you want to tell us like a few things that like, what's the biggest difference between team house with a bunch of idiots and, you know, amazing Linda. Uh, I mean, home cooked meals. She definitely cooks. We, we order out less. I mean, when I was in the team house, it was the daily doba. And then, I'm, uh, did you actually? I know you're not gonna be able to hear. Did you actually crack them from the doba? No, no, she loves Qdoba. Oh, okay, yeah. She's on the same wave. <laughs> but I'll be like, oh, let's skip Qdoba. You want to make something tonight? And then so she'll whip something up. Uh, she'll make like burrito bowls. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I literally watched this man eat burrito bowls for burrito bowls are the the play. Like four years. Yeah. It's... Every meal. Chipotle, Qdoba, Moe's, Willie's. I mean, we, and you lost a lot of weight at one point eating that kind of stuff too, didn't you? Because you you switch. We used to eat pizza and hamburgers, yeah. and fast food all the time, and you switched to Qdoba. Yeah, see, I really don't. I like I don't really have McDonald's or any of that anymore. Oh, like the only time I ever eat out is yeah, I'll just get Qdoba. Oh, okay. So or I Cracker would, Barrel. See, I would think that like yeah, if you if you got you know married with kids and you had uh, someone that could cook really well, you'd gain a whole lot of weight. But like, <laughs> when I mean, you come I from like, a fast food diet, you're probably gonna see the opposite of Yeah, that. that's true. But I feel like I've gained weight back. Oh, I've definitely gained a lot of weight because uh, I don't know. I, I feel like I've been streaming a lot more, so I, I just sit in my chair a lot versus coming over here and doing stuff. Well, it's kind of interesting because outside of like American culture, um, being kind of like chubby is like a signifying like view of happiness in a lot of different cultures because you're obviously you're well fed. I yeah. Mean, you're eating good, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So like when you like especially in Chinese culture, uh, at least in my culture, everyone's so damn skinny for the most part. But if you the, the big fat jolly guy like he's living life good, he's the, it's a sign of wealth and all that other random stuff. Yeah. See, I, I feel like. Maybe if I dropped like 20 pounds, I'd be at the point where I could be like that happy, jolly heftiness. But 
not the point where it's a, a a detriment to my health. Yeah. Oh no. Like, I mean, I feel like I could make some serious changes, and it will come nowhere near a detriment to my health. Because I, I go to the doctor, and they give me like the third degree, like, "Hey, your cholesterol's high. This is high." I'm like, "Oh my You've god." You've been to a doctor? Oh yeah, I go to doctor. <laughs> I, I haven't been to a doctor. This is going to sound really bad. I haven't been to a doctor since my physical. Well, I went to an out-of-state school um, for grad school, so you had to get a physical if you are going to be on campus. Oh, and that shit. was the last time I had one, and that was 22, over a decade ago. Oh, my God. I'm afraid to go. <laughs> yeah, I go to a doctor. <laughs> I, went to, I went to the optometrist, and she started talking all about this stuff. I was like, damn, this is, you know, I should have been paying attention to my eyes more. Like I can't imagine what's going on with the rest of me. So yeah, if I disappear one day, man, take over my podcast. I need to go. To, I need to go to a dentist. That's what I need to do. I actually okay. So I haven't been to a doctor, but I went to an orthodontist uh, to get my teeth whitened. And when they did the the teeth cleaning, uh, was really nice. Yeah, like you don't you don't you wouldn't believe how much crap they can take off your teeth. Like it, like I think like some people want to go get their teeth whitened. To be honest, like go get your teeth cleaned and then see if you want to get them whitened because cl- them they clean them shits and it, yeah. it comes out really good. But yeah, also, I wanted to, like, like, we started talking about all these real-world issues yesterday, and I was like, I mean, it's eventually I'd like to touch upon them, depending on who I'm talking to, but trying to force that stuff down Ham's throat was kind of silly, so I figured we'd talk about more gaming stuff, because, you know, we've never, especially me and you, have never really talked a whole lot or done, like, a serious video or anything like that, talking about anything to do with esports. Like, I always felt like we were kind of, like, the class clowns of uh, what we did, which in Call of Duty was, like, perfect, because yeah. that's, that's the kind of scene. Um, but like, there's some been like a lot of major stuff that's happened in esports, even just recently. Did you uh, did you see that Rick Fox leaving Echo Fox? I heard about that. Ham was actually just telling me about that on the way over because of uh, one of their shareholders was a racist. Yeah, apparently, like you, you, I think it's Vision Esports, Vision Ventures, something like that. The the big company that owns like I don't know, so I don't want to say, but they own a lot of esports properties. Not even not even just organizations. I think they own like Deserto and some other stuff like that. Mm. Um, maybe I actually don't know. Um, so that could be completely false. But, yeah, so Jace Hall. Do you know who Jace Hall is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, so we knew him through all the H1Z1s. Yeah, stuff. you were in the, what was it, the Twin Galaxies, right? Yeah. He was part yeah. of that? Yeah, he was, like, the head of that for a while. He was head of a lot of different stuff. He's actually had a really, really colorful career in esports. And up until, like, the H1Z1, no one really heard of him so much so from, like, the controversy side of things. But, yeah. you know. The H1Z1 League, you see, like, so much stuff happening to him. Because when I heard this story, I was like, Jace Hall. Like, and, you know, I know that. And, you know, obviously Rick Fox was heavily involved with the H1Z1 League. And that was the only time that I ever really had, like, uh, I guess met him or anything like that. Um, but, yeah, so apparently one of the shareholders in Vision Esports is just, like, a racist and had been circulating emails uh, insulting Jace Hall. And I always thought this was kind of a cool story because Jace Hall and Rick Fox are, like, the duo. Yeah. Like, they, they're, like, this <clears throat> brothers in arms, it, it seems like. Um, I feel like we kind of have that thing too in a lot of ways, but yeah. So yeah. apparently they were being uh, jerks and racist to Jace Hall. Uh, and you know, the e- this hasn't actually even been uh, like reported by anybody. This is uh, emails that internal emails within Echo Fox got leaked out basically. Um, and yeah, he was like, you know, Rick Fox is like, I can't do this anymore. So you, you got to imagine it's not just one incident. If you know, one incident. And with this many ramifications, it's like it's wrong, but you, you probably just like you hate that guy and hope it goes away, which I think they even said in the email. But it was to the level of Rick Fox announced him leaving Echo Fox um, before he had reached an agreement with the other stakeholders of how to get him out. So he that like to just to like signify how much he wants out. Like most time people wouldn't leave their babies. And if they are going to, there'd at least be an agreement in order and something in order he's just like no nah, i want out of here you know we'll work on how to get me out of here but is echo fox named after him yeah rick fox yeah echo fox yeah rick fox i be- i don't i'm a little shaky on his history exactly but i believe he bought a spot in the league of legends league yeah. and renamed the team echo fox mm-hmm. um and like and this is a story figure too so i don't hope he's not leaving esports because although as an org owner when he first got into the scene it wasn't everyone's favorite because he was coming and playing paying like um, no, I wouldn't say mid tier, but just like low of the, the bottom of the top teams, like high salaries, and he really started kind of like the livable wage for esports players. And I think the way Echo Fox runs, I don't, I don't think Rick Fox really puts that much. I could be wrong, but I don't think he puts that much money into it. I think they have. Oh no, he has, in, he has investors and stuff. Like yeah, that. it's a, uh, it's like one of like top ten, top one hundred wealthiest men, Strat, some Stratton guy. Yeah, I don't know, like he, but he, he was like, I feel like he was the. 
first one to come in with big money. Like yeah. FaZe and Optic had their own money, um, but he was they were like the first team that came in outside of like some European teams. That, yeah, they like paved the way for like the LGs and. Yeah, they People like that. We started paying salaries, and then COD kids were like, "Oh, I want my money in there." Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Eight seven seven cash now came through. <laughs> yeah, from the Call of Duty point of view, it was like you know, from because we were always a small org. I feel like you know we were the the only tiny org competing with these teams. Yeah. Um, because we had YouTubers, so we had a lot of visibility, and we had sponsors based on that visibility. And then we got extremely lucky in COD, not once but twice. Um, <clears throat> and I feel like you know. When he came in and, and the orgs like his, we're like, oh, we were feeling the pressure because we only we didn't we weren't we didn't have a whole pile of money in just deciding how much to pay players. Mm-hmm. We were paying them as much as we could in a break even scale. Um, but you know, he I feel like he was like the first wave of the future of esports and the way he approached it. Um, not, you know, and even though the H one Z one league tanked, yeah. like the the idea of it and the, the the sheer brassness of it for them to go do it, try to do it that way was was insane. But yeah, no, so he's leaving, <laughs> um, leaving Echo Fox. Uh, which is which is incredible because like you know that, like imagine Optic Hex leaving Optic like actually leaving like putting out a letter saying screw like not just screw leaving Optic. screw Optic yeah. Yeah, whoever owns it's a racist and uh, we'll figure out how to chop it up later was just like huge and what what's even more inter- not even more not more interesting but to add on to the story did you know about the the second Reddit R Lewis or what's his what's his first name Richard Lewis's article. He's the esports reporter. Oh, for like CSGO? Is he the yeah, bald I think dude? he's I think he's from ESGO. Aren't they all bald dudes? <laughs> <laughs> there is a lot of bald Maven, dudes. Maven, yeah, there's a lot of bald dudes in esports casting. I'm playing. Uh but yeah, so the the second add on story to this, which is even crazier. So, you know, I always like to think Call of Duty is kinda like the crazy esport, but we really weren't. CSGO was the crazy esport. Um, and R. Lewis is apparently banned. I say R. Lewis is his at. I think it's his first name is Richard. But he got banned from the Reddit, the subreddit for League of Legends. Like banned. For uh, what? Who knows? Just probably being outspoken, being uh, a journalist. You know, you know people, you, you could write a thousand great articles, write one that's a little toxic, and, you know, they could get banned from stuff like that. Yeah. So, but what's interesting about this is he's banned. So when people put the, the article that he and Deserto wrote, and they were the ones that broke the story because they found the emails uh, somehow that were internally, um, they banned him on Reddit. So they, they took his article off. And then people started typing in there, like referencing the article that was written by him, and they deleted all those posts. Okay, he's banned. What they did next was the audacity of it. It's crazy. They said that the only way this topic could be on Reddit a massive place for exchange of ideas and, and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. As if someone else wrote an article similar to his covering the same story, but didn't credit them. Because people were just rewriting it and crediting them like they were supposed to. Yeah. And they were deleting it. So, like, now, like, n- not only did this whole Rick Fox thing happen, now, like, there's this whole drama in Reddit. The Reddit cover up. Yeah, the Reddit, the cover up, where it's not even really cover up. It's just like they're literally saying, hey, we want someone to write this article so we can be on here, but you can't mention, source, credit. Anybody from the people who actually broke the story. Yeah. So, but you know that was like I always thought that really opened up a really interesting, like communications. I was watch or topic, is I was uh, watching Joe Rogan's podcast the other day, and yeah, uh, he began talking about social media platforms, um, basically policing the content. On it, um, is this something that you you know about, like, how? I mean, it kind of. I, 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 what comes to mind to me is like Alex Jones. Yeah, how exactly. They've banned him off every social media because, you know, he says the the water's turning frogs gay, and he just says crazy stuff. But some people believe him, and he has a following, and they they take him down and say, well, they they claim it's like hate speech, which I guess it is. I mean, I don't really watch Alex Jones, so I, I don't know, but I've seen some crazy clips. Of yeah, him. I've only seen clips. All right, so to pose you the question of what they were talking about, um, when platforms start policing the content. Are they now kind of responsible? Whereas before it was like they were like I think the the, the comparison they made with like telephone companies. Let's say two drug dealers got on their their AT and T phones and did a drug deal, yeah. and AT and T's like I had nothing to do with that. Like, like that's they I, we provide the service they use it. But what if AT and T was listening in the phone calls and like bleeping out certain things? Um, wouldn't they be more? Or are they culpable now? Are they now responsible for the content that's on Facebook, Twitter? And Instagram and stuff like that. Once the you know, the, before they let anybody say anything, now they're coming in and policing. Are they now responsible legally? Um, 
Like, would you think that's an actual thing? I mean, yeah, I guess if they're if they're paying attention to things and they pick and choose what gets through and what doesn't. Then well, this affects you. Like, how many videos have you had demonetized? A lot. Yeah. And, it, and most people, like, I think other people hear that from YouTubers. Oh, you're not getting the money from one video. You're already, like, you know, a dream job. Who cares? But really what it means is that video doesn't hit feeds. Yeah. It doesn't get recommended. It doesn't have anything. There's nothing. It just exists out there. It's a waste of time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, kind of. So, like, you know, you wonder is, like, this is, we're just seeing the start. You know, if, if Reddit's out there saying you, you can't talk about this person, and even you're talking about his work, you have to copy him and not credit him. If Facebook is, you know, pushing aside one political group versus another, yeah. when at, the, at what point are these social media platforms going to be responsible for what's being said on there? And yeah. I feel like YouTube's the first one who got on that wave because they're like, delete, fucking demonetize, ban. Yeah, well, because it's weird because, I mean, I could go out in front of the White House and yell whatever I want to yell as long as it's not at someone and... You know, if I can't go out there and call someone the N-word. I couldn't imagine you in front of them <laughs> holding a sign. Yeah, I mean, so... The, what would you even protest for? I don't, I don't understand people who protest because I feel like it doesn't get anything done. Uh, Well, no, almost, I mean, the civil rights movement. <laughs> okay, yeah, but, like... Yeah, and nowadays it does seem like, you know... I, I feel like a more more of a protest there was Rosa Parks not getting up from her seat. Not Rosa Parks standing out in front of the White House and saying this isn't right. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, yes and no. I mean, I feel like you're kind of like comparing like people tweeting out about something and not really doing anything doing anything. Yeah. But I feel like when you when people all go out in March individually, they're probably not doing a whole lot. But when you see that many people like outside of somewhere that have skipped work, skipped school, it's it, it, I think it, it. Okay, like when Trump when Trump was elected and you saw <laughs> all the Democrats out there marching. Yeah. Like saying, not my president. What did that do? He's still president. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And they wasted their time. Y yeah. Well, I mean. Yeah. Encourage more people to vote maybe next time and get, you know, people around you to vote and get out and did do you something vote? about it. I've never voted. Yeah, me either. That was the other thing we talked about uh, was like, we were like talking about like our political point of views. And I was like, to be honest, like I'm like a disinterested millennial. Yeah. And I feel like we're kind of the real problem because we've left the voting up to people that don't really hold the same values as us in a lot of ways. Now, a lot of the high school level and college level stuff is starting to come up, which mm -hmm. they've always have in the past. But like, you know, when it comes down to it, it's just like, yeah, no, I feel like we're, we're kind of the problem because we don't vote. And yeah. here we are saying hey, the people are protesting. They're not even accomplishing. Well, see, I we're the like, worst people. Well, yeah, but I don't I don't follow politics. I don't yeah. watch the debates. I don't. Pay, so I feel like I would just be voting to vote yeah and i would be doing a disservice if i just went out and voted uneducated on anything see voted. i feel like i feel like i would be voting against someone rather yeah. than for someone. yeah and you know i'm not going to speak on donald trump but i think why not well i, I was gonna say i think that uh this is my going on my it's my channel so <laughs> <laughs> like, they're gonna hate on me not well because I, I mean i don't know too much about his like his policies and and stuff like that i mean i know the economy is really well right now it's doing, it's doing great but uh I think him being president has made a lot of younger people feel like they need to get out and vote. Yeah, to be honest, if anything, like he's the most interesting thing to happen to politics in so long. Like Obama yeah. was really interesting, but like I feel like he was one of those people that was like, "Yeah, I'm a man of the people." Blah blah blah. And he ended up being. I mean, no, I don't want to hate on Obama because he was a great dude. I just, I love Obama, but like he's kind of ended up just being another politician. Yeah. When you stand him next to Trump. Like him compared to other politicians, yeah, he was he was a little bit more. But Trump is so not politician yeah. that it just dragged everyone's attention, like the whole world's attention onto it. So oh, anything, yeah, everything you see, Twitter, Facebook, CNN, every day they talk about Trump. My mom watches CNN. I never watch the news. <laughs> she watches this shit every day, and I go home and, like, some, Trump could fart the wrong way, and they're talking about it. Yeah, honestly, it it's kind of incredible. Well, what's, it, what's, it just almost makes it worse. It's, I'm disinterested youth yeah. or disinterested uh, millennial in the high point time of pol politics being interesting. Now, I mean, I mean, I do what I would think like the normal person does, the dis like millennial, I guess. I swipe through, I read the articles, I find it entertaining on both sides. You know, the things that, like, I don't necessarily disagree with his, like, him, the way he ran on stuff and then did it. Yeah. Like, I feel like I fall on the side where it's like, well, I, you know, I don't really have a strong enough opinion. So I'll side with the majority. 
Like, whatever everyone thinks, like, that's got to be good. And they he did exactly. So the only thing you can really give him is he, he did exactly what he said he was going to do. Yeah. But, like, from an entertaining point of view, yeah. Well, the things he says and people's reactions to him, I mean, it's not good, but it's it's entertaining. Mm-hmm. And then the people also, like, this, look at the other side, the people that are standing up against him. Like, those stories are great, too. The uplifting, you know, I guess, courageous stories are, you know, of all the different things that people are trying to stand up against him are. And the, the way that's kind of brought a lot of those groups together on both sides is this incredible for basically news channels. Yeah. I even tweeted out the other day something really stupid, really <laughs> stupid. And, and I tweeted it out knowing it'd be dumb. I even put down at the bottom. I was like, well, what if we made the news companies pay more taxes since they are profiting off of politics, something the taxpayer pays for? Did this start raining? No, it was okay. windy. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, and, I, and of course Hutch, you know, who I've reached out to, I really want to get him on this podcast. I offered to fly him out, buy him a hotel, and everything, trying to get yeah. him out here to talk about this stuff because he knows about all this stuff. Oh, every time anything political goes down, you just look at Hutch's Twitter. He's yeah. tweeting about it. He's my fa- he's one of my favorite Twitter accounts. Like, and just because he always replies to everything, and yeah. his responses are pretty pretty well thought out. Um, sometimes he gets on some weird weird points. Um, like I was watching his interchange with Wildcat the other day, someone I met uh, at a poker tournament, basically, and they were arguing about uh, I think the the ratio of income to the cost of a house, and it was funny because Hutch like said though it's a, it's a crazy that you know the houses cost so much now and the, the salary the last, but he like didn't do the ratio. They were the same ratio. Yeah. But over and all, like you know nowadays the cost of living, the general cost of living, like I feel like you would know more about the cost of living than even I would because you've got you know, wife, Rancher, kid, stuff like that. Yeah. Like you've yeah. got college to start saving for, which is uncle Justin. I will contribute to, <laughs> um, and like medical insurance is saving up all that stuff. I started that this year. Medical insurance. You didn't, you didn't, have, you didn't have insurance before. No, 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 no. I'm still, oh. I'm still on the one twenty five, or no, 26. You gotta get your own. Your own. No. Oh, yeah, that's true. I'm still on my dad. That was insurance. an Obama thing. Like I was on because I was a full time student. I was allowed to be on my mom's insurance for so full time student as well. Yeah, oh, is that what you? Were? <laughs> I don't know. Cut, cut. He was in school. <laughs> All of a sudden, the FBI like prompts in the door. <laughs> I just know come uh, December. Yeah, I'm off my dad's insurance plan. I gotta find my own insurance. So see, that's like one of the main adult things. I feel like I glossed over. Like I bought insurance, but I don't have any idea what it does yeah. I, I like you know i almost want to go talk to one of those people that tries to sell you some ridiculous like medical insurance plan because i don't think mine like covers anything besides the penalty you get if you don't get <laughs> health insurance because it's so cheap yeah. you know and 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 then like yeah like i went to go i think when i got cut up by the drone like you i saw the pay you have like a big deductible yeah i right? paid like three hundred dollars for yeah. that freaking trip actually i don't think i paid it they sent me a letter and i don't think i paid it yet I tried to pay there. I tried to give him my card. They're like, oh, no, it's fine. We'll, we'll, bill, bill, you. we'll bill you later. I was like, well, you don't understand. How the mail system works in my house is it doesn't, so I'm going to need to pay now. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, taxes. Did you pay your taxes? I did. You know, everyone in this house, uh, what is it? They got an extension. Yeah. And didn't do it. And it's just like, well, I was like, when did you get the extension? They're like, the day taxes were due. I don't, I don't care. It's like. I think Hammond told me that Chaos owed like a whole bunch, but he didn't write a bunch of stuff off. So that's why he he got an extension and he got a guy to do his tax. I think Chaos tried to do it by himself. Yeah. And then he tried to get it. He had a guy do it. My dad does mine because he's an accountant. Yeah. So, you know. The taxes at our level really aren't that complicated. Yeah. Uh, I would like if you're if you're watching this and you, you, you're struggling doing your taxes first time, buy a uh, TurboTax. I mean, yeah. they really kind of go through it. Although like they don't, they're not as situation specific. Like I bet I pay. Probably four or five thousand dollars more every year than I probably should because I just don't get into it that much. Plus, I always play a late penalty. Yeah. You're supposed to pay them shits quarterly. And uh, you know, it's funny because I I'm an account I have an accounting degree. I didn't get my CPA, and I also studied tax law. But like, I never studied personal income tax. And when I did, it was like in you know my junior year. So like, I this and I never ever thought about and I never met anybody that made enough money. You know, because we were all poor college students. So you had to pay quarterly. Um, but yeah, no, so I ended up having to pay back taxes. So I remember when you were, you were the first one that did that in the last house when, uh, PayPal started reporting people's income to the, to the IRS. Well, yeah. So when, cause through Twitch people donate, right. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> and so, you know, my dad looked at it as like, he's a, it's a donation, you know, you can receive up to like $11,000 or something like that. 
with a donation. Yeah, well, I think it's $13,000. It counts as a gift. Yeah. He's Something like, so like what's that. the difference between some guy watching your stream giving you 30 bucks versus me giving you 30 bucks? He's like, if I gave you 30 bucks, I'm, you're not paying tax on that $30. I'm not sure the rules. <laughs> this is really bad because I always studied all this stuff, but it might be between family. It can be a gift. Outside, it's considered a tip. Um, you know, like a charitable donation isn't really a like as far as taxes are concerned. That's like a classification. Yeah. Like people like don't know the difference between a nonprofit organization. They're like, you know, a oh, nonprofit. You know, they just operate. And they don't make any money. Like, no, they make a lot of money. There's it's just all reinvested uh, or spent. It's not going to a shareholder. So like it's a normal company. Yeah. But they allowed a, a certain classification for paying taxes. Well, I had to do that. So I had gotten the letter the same time you did, but I'm, you know, again, not an adult, so I forgot about it. And we move every year, so I didn't get the re-notification. So I finally went in and signed into uh, TurboTax. No, IRS.com. Oh. You know, because you can go on there, but I had to get a credit card first so that I could verify my ID. So I had like all these adult things to do. I was like, damn, all I want to do is play video games. Um, but yeah, so I went on there and I owed like a lot for two years, and it was from those like way back when I was broke. Like 2013, 2012, fresh out of school. Um, this is when I was living in that shitty apartment, like when I very first moved to Atlanta to work mm -hmm. at Scuff Gaming. Um, and I was getting donations from Twitch, and then yeah. I guess I had just forgotten. You know, I didn't realize how much it was. It ended up like the first year ended up being like twenty, twenty five thousand dollars, and the next year ended up being thirty, which was back then like my entire income. Yeah. Um, or at least a large part of it. And yeah, I had to pay quite a lot of money going there. So that yeah. the tax day was. <clears throat> An evil day because I not only had to pay my taxes for this year or last year, I had a, 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 a solid twenty thousand dollar back taxes. Day. Yeah, so it, it was incredible, and it was you know, I felt like that's just an extremely adult thing. Like we're transitioning. I almost wanted to like you know, in this podcast because you didn't really see it from the vlogs. Is we act like children a lot yeah. of the times in vlogs. Like when I go shopping in Target without a camera, we make the same jokes, but we're not riding the stupid little bikes around. We're not oh, doing yeah. that stuff. So it might be kind of cool in this podcast to kind of like show the transition from really late blooming adults um, into it. I mean, it's funny because I, I, I thought about that when I think all of us went to Target <laughs> with yeah. like Suda and we were all in Target and like Chaos and Joey were in the stuffed animal aisle, like punching stuffed animals. <laughs> I'm like, I'm filming this and it's like normal to us. But yeah. like imagine a normal adult walking behind seeing a bunch of grown men in the stuffed animal aisle punching well, like I mean, Joey, Kirby. Joey, like, yeah, it's funny because I, I see the same thing, but I think about that now. I was like, well, no, if the camera wasn't there, Joey and Chaos would still be punching <laughs> stuffed animals. Yeah, but, like, just yeah. imagine, like, they Maybe see grown men. Us. Like, if I saw another grown man punching, like, stuffed yeah. animals, I'd be like, damn, what's good with that guy? Yeah, no. So I just wonder what other people around us think when they see us. And I think Chris, well, me and you too. have always been the ones behind the camera. So they're not thinking that about <laughs> us. So we're the ones just filming these idiots doing stupid stuff in public. I thought about that. Uh, Crispy said something when we went to the, or no, Joey, we went to Olive Garden after we went to the gardens with like Ham and his family. Mm -hmm. And Joey's like, we got to be a weird looking group. Oh, yeah. You got uh, Ham and he's, he's like, it's me and there's you, Linda, and Dom, and then Ham, Melissa, and Pork Chop. Ham's got like pink hair and Joey's just like the random kid. Like, they're probably wondering whose kid is that. Like, did you know, uh, Ham had to go. I don't want to talk about the reason why, but Ham had to go down to his school and talk to uh, like an administrator. You know how like, schools are with their kids, and he, and he was telling me this story. He went down oh, there, Pork Chop School. Yeah, okay, Pork okay. Chop School. Not, not yeah, <laughs> and to go talk to them. And I looked at him. I was like, "Did you go with pink hair?" <laughs> and he was like, "Yeah." I was like, "Damn it, dude!" <laughs> like, at least put it up in your hat, like. <laughs> But I was starting to think about it because, you know, when you're in school, you're young, so you don't notice it. But, like, when if you're a teacher, there's probably a lot of, like, 20, 20 25-year-old parents that, you know, like, they're raising the, the, the kids, you know, at school, teaching them stuff. And they call in the parents, and they're, it's more kids. And they've probably got, you know, and not to say that you and Ham are kids, but, yeah, you're kids. So, like, yeah. you know, they come in and talk about certain things. I was like, that's got to be an interesting view. Like, you know, like, then now, now I kind of see where the teachers get that kind of attitude at. Um, not attitude like in a negative way, but like they they're they really are like one of the greatest public servants there are. They're they're helping shape like the American family in a lot of ways. Yeah. Um, because basically Ham had uh, I think it, I'm gonna go ahead and say it. Pork chop was getting picked on, and Ham told her to tell the guy to fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> Did she tell the guy to fuck off? <laughs> she went to school and said, "My dad told you or told me to tell you to fuck off." <laughs> and she got in trouble, and so Ham had to go down there, and he's telling me the stories. Like I went down there, I was like. Did you did you have the pink hair and all that stuff? Yeah, I went there in a tie-dye shirt and everything. Like, oh, my God. I can't imagine what that's like. 
Uh, but yeah, no, like more and more, I need to, I need to start doing like more adult things. I, but I also said like, yo, I feel like I'm gonna be a child forever until I like m- meet a girl. Yeah. I feel like you know they're you know they have that old saying that girls mature faster. Mm-hmm. I think it's more that girls are mature and we don't mature until we meet them or something like that. Um, I feel that. Yeah, you are the greatest shining example, I, I believe, because Ham, Ham, Ham definitely he's always been kind of mature in that stuff. There was always Ham. Hamily. There's two different hams. Yeah, there's two different hams. And then, you know, you've always been kind of the same, so you're still, you know, yeah. still the same, but you've, you've got the sharkily around you. I do. It's pretty cool, man. I'm jealous. Like, I don't think we've ever had a conversation. I was like, man, I'm, I'm happy for you. I think I <laughs> tweeted about it because we're social media people. I was like, you know, when people ask me, what do you feel about Sharp moving out of the house? I was like, to be honest, like, not that Sharp was ever sad, but I always felt like after the videos were done and the streams were done, you just went into your room or just not necessarily you're just bored, bored and lonely. Almost yeah. like, not maybe necessarily lonely because you were never an emotional guy, like standing next to Crispy or something. Like that. <laughs> By the way, Crispy was supposed to be the first guy in this podcast, but he he won't come on here until he gets a haircut. That's, cr- that's very crispy. Extremely crispy. Gotta get his skin cream, his, his haircut, beard shaved up. Yeah. I, I always feel kind of bad about it because I, you know, that's why I never have always made jokes. I always felt like it's one of the best jokes to ever make, um, like in high school, like acne jokes. But like because I suffered with that as well, and especially I had adult acne for a while. Yeah. Um. That when he doesn't want to be in videos and stuff like that because acne, like chaos would be like, we should you meet a girl? Shout out. I'm just like, oh man, I kind of understand because like, definitely in college, not so much in high school because you, you can't really not go. But in college, if I had like a really bad breakout, I'd skip class. I think yeah. that was the only time I really skipped class, unless I didn't have attendance and I never went. Um, but I still passed the class. I still got good grades and stuff like that. Um, and all that junk. Have you been following the Olivia Jade story or the Lori Lachlan story? No, I'm not. I'm going to guess that it's about the whole, like, the like kids getting through college. Yeah, college much. admission scandal. Yeah. You ever heard, you even heard about any of that? I didn't I didn't read into that at all. Yeah, I read a, a little bit of it. And I you know, I really, like, I don't really care about the, the actual case so much. Um, I, I mean, obviously it's wrong and there's some illegal stuff going on there. What was more interesting was how it was painted in the media. Because it was like, there's all these people involved that were like bad. Like yeah. they're like school administrators, coaches, SAT prep course runners and owners, stuff like that. And they're the ones who got paid. They made freaking bank off this like network scheme. Mm-hmm. And you go on the news and it's just, they're just tearing apart the mother who paid a whole lot of money to send her kid to college. Yeah. And like you, you wonder at what point, like how much... Like was that the the right way to paint it? Was that the was that what I like what we needed to hear? Like, cause parent rich people are using their money to get stuff. No, happens all the time. Happens all the time. Honestly, like, what if if you're not rich and you want to be rich, don't you want that? <laughs> like when you finally get rich and all of a sudden you can't use your money to do anything anymore, it's like, damn. Like, <laughs> yeah. What was the point? What was the point of all this money if I can't do things that other people can't do? And then the other thing, which is which I really feel like is the story that's about to come out, is the mother doing whatever she can for her her. I feel like that's almost any. I almost feel like that's something that any parent could relate to. Yeah. So I asked Ham this question. Let's say uh, you hit the lottery, or you just have a dumb amount of money, um, and you're you really want to get your kid into college. Um, and I know you. I don't know if you attended a four year university, but it's it's an incredible projection trajectory change for someone's future. Yeah. Um, and someone hits you up and, and you know said, hey, I have this network of shit. You pay us a certain amount of money, and it'll go through as a charitable donation and all this stuff like that, and we'll get your kid into school. Like, straight up, would you do it? Like, let's say Dom wanted to get into a good They like say he applied and he didn't get in before? Oh, no. I, I'm not sure that's how that ha- this happened in this case, but let's just say, let's say he came home from high school one day, and he goes, hey, my other really, because you're rich, so your kids are in prep school with all the other rich kids. Yeah. Um, hey, my dad's, my friend's dad knows a guy. And I really, really want to go to this school, but my grades aren't so great. My SATs aren't so great. And, you know, I've been to school and know that, you know, that's not really indicative of how good a student someone's going to be. Smart kids fail all the time. Dumb kids find themselves in college. Or not dumb kids. People that are not dedicated to school. They don't apply themselves. Don't apply themselves, which was me. <clears throat> I did not apply myself when I first got there, but I yeah. blossomed later. Would you do it? Like, no bullshit. No cameras are off. Would you, would you bribe that person to get your kid into school? See, I feel like I wouldn't. Really? I wouldn't. What if you're not famous? What if you're one of the one of the hundred and fifty faceless people and you're not the full house mom? You have like would you do it? 
Because it sounds morally bankrupt. I would. But I don't have a kid. Yeah, see, I, like, I'm thinking, like, the scenario. Because I, I just look at it as, like, you know, I didn't go to a four-year university. But getting, like, decent grades in high school is not, like, a challenging thing. I, yeah. got, I had good grades. I could have gone to a four-year university. So, you know, if My you're not going to. weird, Mike. Oh, if you're not going to. I would have a tough you ma- question. Isn't I, it? I I would have the mentality of you made the bed, you lie in it. Like I'm not gonna. Well, yeah, but see, like, all right, yeah, I mean, I understand, agree that, but as someone that's like, I'm a little older, so, and I know how crazy I was a kid. Like me at 18 versus me even at 20, 20 years old yeah. was a different person, completely different person. So sometimes, and I got kind of pushed into college by my parents. Like I wanted to go, I knew I had to go, I was happy to go, but I was nowhere mature enough. I was not ready for that at all like I had I didn't have like we had a lot of freedom in high school like my parents weren't the strictest people in the world but it wasn't like I could just do whatever I wanted so that that was my first taste of doing whatever I wanted and I wasn't ready for it so I know that like you know if your kids that way or not that interested in college you know they might find their way there and just because they weren't so interested in high school and getting into college that might you know maybe putting them into a good school and then buying stuff could change their life like drastically and, you know, I've also been in the college system. I know how much money is involved. I, mm-hmm. Like, most people don't realize that the educational uh, industry is a for-profit industry. These people make buttloads oh, yeah. um, off of educating. You know, that's an extremely profitable area to be in, not just from the schools, but SAT prep courses, you know, school book create makers, you know, all the add-on services that are provided to students. It's just a mega complex of the sports. Yeah, sports. It's just a lot of money involved in i guess someone paying just more money to get their kid into college and that's ignoring that she might have taken a spot from someone that deserved it i think that's the real thing but at the same time like I, they're both wrong but i always felt like you know the, the i feel like they're hitting on the lesser of the two evils like the mom sending her kid to college and paying a bribe to get her in like okay like that's wrong yeah but the guy who created the network or the group of people that created the network that was it enabled this, that offered, that solicited these parents, taking advantage of parents, just trying to get their kids into good schools. And it, 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 even if you're a rich, famous person in L.A. or you're a poor person, like you, that want to get your kid into college at, at any means is a normal thing. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, my parents had told me right from when I was a kid, like when I was a baby almost, like we're saving for your college. So. 18 years later, I couldn't be like, I ain't going. It's like, no, nah, <laughs> I'm going. I don't care if I'm going there and being a janitor. Like, I'm going to be there. Yeah. A type of thing. So you wouldn't. I mean, it's a tough question. But it's what okay. if your daughter really wanted to go to the school and all her friends are going? And you knew that if she didn't go into the school, she might like, or he might end up like a bum. If he, all right, if it, if it was like <laughs> that, if it was like, you're going to be a bum or you're going to go to the school, then yeah, I would probably... We'd, we'd probably be going to like, the yeah, if you if you walk. Oh, yeah. Let's say you're walking into Dom's room. He's 18 years old and he's filling out Hardy's applications and and moved aside. The that college could, that could build character. I mean, it does. I delivered pizza. I mean, I, you can still work at Hardy's <clears throat> in college. I delivered pizza all throughout uh, most of college and most some of law school and then like a year afterwards. And that was one of the most humbling experiences. Yeah. Um, not from the fact that, oh, I'm big, you know, educated guy. What am I here delivering pizzas for? It was just like. Uh, my parents were just when I came home. I was like, I got to study for the bar. Like when I graduated law school, but I'm not done. I still have all the stuff. They're like, fuck that. Go and get a job. You got to pay for stuff. We, we, we've we've helped you out sending you money for this long. It's kick the bird out of the nest. Yeah. Let's watch you fly thing. And it's because my I think it was because my brother had a lot of trouble. So they didn't want to baby me at all. So like I was out and there. See, just, look where you are now. <laughs> but if they would if they would have helped you out, you know, who knows? You could have slacked off. Could have been lazy. Well, like I mean, yeah, it, you never know. Well, the reason. I feel like a lot of the reasons why I'm here now is because of the necessity of money. Yeah. So, like, I did YouTube and all the stuff behind the scenes and did all these things in gaming because there was something I could do while delivering pizza and studying for the bar and earn an extra 100 bucks. So, if you would have, if your parents would have just let you live at home, no job, and study for the bar, then you'd probably be a lawyer somewhere. Right yeah, now. maybe. Well, there's a, the opposite of You would have never met me. Yeah. Oh. Heartbreaks. So, do I want to rob Dominic of meeting someone like me or you or Chaos? Yeah, but <laughs> you know, we're also, but then, then again, like we're not mega millionaires. There's people our age that have oh, my yeah. same education that are running, you know, conglomerate companies out there. That, yeah, that are doing that. Like, there's always higher. I always felt like that was also like a, a funny thing. I always tried to explain to like 
newer creators that kind of got like you know the 10k ego idea i'm always talking about like you know people that are like large creators they have kind of a less ego because uh, they're more aware of everything whereas as someone that's got just reached 10k like they're this is the first time they're relevant so they're trying to act like the big guys and that you know they want everything and all this other stuff but when once you you're around for a while you realize there's always someone bigger Mm-hmm. Like if you catch an ego, there's someone that'll walk right by you, be humble as shit, and have twice as much as you, and it's just like, damn, yeah, it makes you it makes you feel like shit. Um, and I've only had, I feel like I've had one of those 10k moments. Have you? You ever, you ever do something? I feel like I had 10,000 followers on Twitter before Twitter was cool. Yeah, oh well, yeah, you were because so I had like my Call of Duty following and stuff like that. No, I mean, did you ever like? I meant more like not so much the number, but did you ever do something where it was kind of like a little egoy, and then you realize, oh, that was kind of. That was kind of egoy. I kind of like got into my own hype there a little too much. No, I can't really think of a time. I mean, I, if you you're always think, kind you, of a humble guy, if you can think of a time for me, then. But I, I don't know. No, I mean, I mean, I don't know. Like, I mean, I think I have one of those moments. That I think I've told you about, and that's when uh, it was back in Ghosts when Optic Hex followed me. So, like, have I told you this story before? Oh, yeah, yeah. You followed him back, and he was like, "Why are you following me back? Yeah, you yeah. Didn't follow me before." So yeah, so back then I was like a new person on the scene. And I followed I tried I followed like people that I'd met basically. I was I had that old school version of social media, like real person social media. I'm following you if we met and we're friends and we know each other. Yeah. Type of thing. Um, but like as I was getting into the industry, you wanna you're supposed to follow everyone that's like relevant in the industry you are because it's just good networking, it's just a good visible thing. But I hadn't followed Optic Hex. He followed me, um, and we had met a few times too, like briefly at, at events. Um, and I followed him back and he literally tweeted at me, Oh, don't just follow me because I followed you. <laughs> and it was like, oh, L, dude, L. I just caught such a huge L. And it really changed my whole view on it. And from that point on, I followed absolutely everybody, even if they didn't follow me back or if they followed me and unfollowed me. Like, I wasn't, like, that. no ego on Twitter whatever after that because I didn't want to have that feeling again. Like, when someone I should have been following, because if you're an upcoming org and you didn't follow Optic Hex, especially in those days, yeah. it's like, oh, you were just, that looks like you have an ego. Like, oh, you have. You're too cool to, to follow the, the one of the founders of the sport, basically. So yeah, no, no, that was that was a huge. That was what kind of like changed my perspective. And then from then on, as bigger as you got, you always realized there was someone someone bigger. So I always see when the new creators come up, they have this really egoy thing, and then they always soften out towards the end because you know, they you, realize, yeah, this, damn, I ain't really shit. Yeah, you really are. You're like, you know, like you're nothing compared to the bigger guys. Like you're big compared to the small guys, but as as large as you get. You know, those people that were big when you were tiny just got bigger. Mm-hmm. So, like, like people were saying when you blew up, uh, like, an ego thing would have been act like Team Cal was, like, on the same level as uh, Optic and FaZe because we were competing against them. I was like, well, no, we blew up. You know, there's no, we got really lucky there. But while we were blowing up, those other brands, they were, getting bigger. They were growing too. So, it's like, you know, that whole, that whole 10K ego thing is kind of, like, out the window. I would say the only time that I've had maybe, like, a self-ego is within, like, my content and my numbers and like yeah, not yeah. and not thinking that my YouTube views would fall off or like yeah. things like that. So there'd be times like if, if I could go back, maybe not slack as much as I did. Yeah. And maybe not take as many breaks as I did. I feel like we're a little hard on ourselves though. Like I, I, I feel the exact same way because I definitely weaned myself off of YouTube content and I could give you like a million different reasons why. Um, but really it was just, we're the small creators. Yeah. Like we're, I always feel like we have kind of an image and we get talked to a certain way and certain things. But like if out of all the creators we know, we've always been kind of like the middle class creators. We've always been kind of the grinders type of thing. Yeah. Um, so when there's changes in our industry, we have to follow them. So YouTube was big. Like I made probably most of, I guess, my influence off of like that boom when we were making troll videos. Mm-hmm. And then it kind of happened again with the vlogs and the IRL videos type of thing. But during that time streaming went from something people did on the side to almost as or more profitable than doing youtube videos so the death of certain kinds of like content all the time was because we started chalking up our time onto onto streaming Mm -hmm. so even when people yell at me about uploading videos i was like i don't want to like i was like i've been slacking i've been slacking i was like well yeah you're kind of i wasn't doing nothing I was yeah. still working. I still, like, earn, if not more, than I did before because, you know, the scene's grown and there's so many more ways to monetize your content and your brand. But, like, I feel like we, uh, we've we been a little kind of hard on ourselves in that sense. Yeah. I don't think that's ego. Maybe not knowing that that's inevitable, you know, unless you're, like, PewDiePie. 
but even then he's got peaks and valleys i think like in his content type of thing i feel like you really what like the, the goal at that point is not to beat yourself up and dissuade yourself from making your own content type of thing and then at the same time remembering to do it you've enjoyed doing yeah you know, like you know and that's hard like it sounds that almost sounds egotistical because like i did troll videos and stopped doing them not because the views went down type of thing. It was just because I did 800 of them. And the same thing with the vlogs. I still get those tweets. I announced my podcast and like, we just want vlogs. And it felt so bad. Oh, but people still come to my stream. Yo, is just vlogging today? Yeah. And it's not that I don't want to vlog, but it's, I've made what? 850 of those videos. Yeah. There's only so many times we can go fuck around at Walmart. Well, no, it's just, yeah. I mean, I feel like we could do that content for forever and people would probably find it just as entertaining because it's, it's interesting. But at the same time, like, my interest in making it. And you can tell, like, if you went to watch, like, the first year or two of vlogs, like, I put myself in them more. At the end, I was like, I, you could hardly see me in the vlogs. It's because I, like, genuinely kind of lost interest. And not lost interest. Wanted to put my creativity somewhere else type of thing. Yeah. Um, and I feel like for you, that was streaming. Because you weren't, you would always kind of stream, but, like, especially recently, you have dove into it, like, head over heels. Yeah. I went and had lunch with Dylan. The other day, and the, one of the first things we talked about is, yo, man, I, I got on Twitch the other day and saw my dude Brandon in a dress. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, dude, he's out here, bro. Dude, Dylan's been streaming, too. Yeah, he has. Yeah, um, yeah no, I, went, I just recently went and had lunch with him. Uh, he's supposed to come out on the podcast and do stuff. Have you talked to him? I, when I was, like, a couple He's another one ago, that got married and moved out. Well, well, he plays, so he plays Call of Duty all the time. Mm -hmm. So if I ever play Call of Duty, like him and Nezlo, I play with them. It's a little kill kill. But other than that, like, I haven't. I haven't talked to him much. Did you hear about, I don't even sure this is like good to talk about. Actually, never mind. There was a whole drama. Remember Nick and uh, Jonah from our old neighborhood? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Joey told me that. Yeah, no, actually, I don't want to talk about that. But yeah, <laughs> no, there was a whole bunch of stuff that went on with our old neighborhood where like <laughs> friends slept with people's moms and all this other guy. We left that neighborhood and Boogie with the hoodie moved in. Everyone started sleeping with each other. Yeah. Like, you would have thought that we moved to the neighborhood and screwed things up because we're the crazy people. No, like, that sub suburbia is fucking nuts. It is. Um, so, yeah, no, I was like, he just told me about all those stories and about how great of a, a cook JoJo is and, yeah. stuff and all that good stuff. So, but no, I, I was supposed to get him to come hang out more. Now that he said that now that he's got a little bit more free time, um, that he might he might come stop by a little bit more, which would be interesting. Cause he, I, f I feel like he felt like he wasn't, he wasn't welcome. No, I don't feel like he felt like Because I think me and Ham played with him one time, and, and uh, he was like, uh, Ham's like, yo, you should like, come by sometime. He's like, yeah, if I'm welcome. And I was like, that's just Dylan. I was like, shut that's up, just Dylan. bro. That's who Dylan is. Yeah. Like, he always had that kind of sense of humor. He's a big softy. He's, he's still my poo bear. You know, did you see that he changed his header on Twitter to Winnie the Pooh? I don't know. Like he used to hate that, and I was just like, <laughs> I used to, I used to go around every event and just call him Winnie the Pooh. I was embracing it. He's, yeah. he's streaming. He's well. Now he bear. lost the weight. Now he doesn't actually look like Winnie the Pooh. He's like, yeah, I look like Winnie the Pooh. I said, yeah. yeah, you're Winnie the Pooh. It's a different Dylan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, no, yeah. I don't think we ever even talked about. That. I did want to be a little bit more real in this cast, like be able to talk about certain things. I don't feel like a lot of people like. I mean, I, from the outside, I think everyone thought that Dylan, just like you met Linda, like he met JoJo, and they moved out. Um, but it, I feel like that was really the reason because it's hard to be a couple inside of a team house. Yeah. I would think for both parties. Yeah. Both parties. So like, yeah, we had one of those classic, uh, roommate clashes basically over dishes in the kitchen and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, which I want to, I want to talk to Dylan a whole lot about cause looking back on it, it's, it's fucking hilarious. Hilarious. Back then it wasn't so funny, but when you go look at it, like imagine our group like in the kitchen arguing about how the kitchen was supposed to be clean with people like me and Joey and chaos in there just kind of giggling throughout the whole thing. Uh, but yeah, that's just Dylan being Dylan. I don't yeah. know if I'm welcome thing. Yeah. So what, did you ever talk about like why Dylan moved out? Uh, no. I mean, I feel like he he moved out because he wanted to. You know, him and JoJo wanted their own space. Um, and you know, they made that very verbal. Yeah. <laughs> So when it came to getting the, the new house, um, we had a choice between getting a house with seven bedrooms um, that was like a lot like our old house and didn't have like a pool or a lake or any of the cool features or a movie theater or pool room, any of that kind of stuff, and having more rooms. But they kind of wanted their own space because they would come to me with their problems you know, about the stuff. And I'd be like, it just kind of sounds like you guys need your own space. Like, because, you know, just because they're messy doesn't mean they're bad or right or wrong. And just because you're super clean doesn't mean this or that. It's just, yeah. you know, it takes a lot to live with a whole lot of people. So when they when it came down to it, yeah, they wanted like we wanted to get a house that had less rooms and a little bit more amenities to make it more of a fun playhouse like our old houses, 
Uh, and, you know, I feel like they both wanted to get their own space. And plus, soon as soon as uh, Dylan left the team, um, they were looking at apartments that day. You remember that? Walking yeah. down, they were looking at apartments <laughs> and stuff. So they, they, he wanted to get on. I was like, like how, I mean, you stuck around in the house for, no, actually, you didn't. You, you met Linda. You, went, you were either traveling, she was visiting, and then you came home, and then you said you were moving out like a couple of days later. So, Wait, hold on. I lived here for like three months. Oh, yeah. We were here for like three months. Well, not compared to Dylan. They were there like seven, eight months. Yeah, 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 yeah. You had a shorter time span. So oh, I feel like yeah, if you yeah. get a girlfriend and you want to start a family, especially start a family. Oh, yeah, that's why. You well, want to get your own spot. Because when we moved to this house, people were like, yo, it's fucked up. They gave you the smallest room and all this shit. I was like, <laughs> I literally told them, like, that I was going to be getting my own spot. We all knew that that was going to yeah. happen type of thing. And then, yeah, Teddy was uh, was just waiting for you to move out. He was waiting for me to move out. And then the day that I'm moving out, I'm like, uh, yo, you, like, are you going to move up in my room? He's like, mate. I'm not going to be here no more. I'm like, yeah. what? And then Teddy left all at the same time. I wanted to address that, but I, I didn't really know how much he wanted shared about that. But, yeah, you know, he left because of, you know, I, I've heard different things. Like, he kind of said that it was his family. He misses family. Um, yeah. He misses religion and being involved with that. He said something was wrong with his mom, but I don't want to go into that. Um, then I also heard that he started a business with his dad. He's like a bodega or something. Yeah. I saw, like, a little store on his Instagram. Do you want to go over there and visit him? Like, I've, I've always wanted to go. Go to Birmingham to visit Ted. Is, are we welcome to visit Ted? Yeah, why wouldn't we? I don't know. Oh, I thought you meant because you've seen like Peaky Blinders and he lives in Birmingham. That's the main reason oh, I want to go. I just want to go there and yell, Peaky fucking Blinders. <laughs> it just doesn't be so much fun because he's actually from Birmingham. But yeah. I've always said I wanted to go over and visit him. I miss him. He, he hops in Discord once in a while and he's very uh, philosophical now. Yeah. He's oh, always yeah. asked me about like Dominic and like how he's learning and like what kind of education he's going to have. And like, I'm like, I didn't ask you any of that. Shit. I'm like, bro, I'm playing Fortnite. Like, what do you mean? I think he's, I think he was growing up. I feel like he had the same thing that happens to a lot of young people is he came out here and not hating on Teddy at all. He didn't do anything. Like he, he hardly did anything out here. Um, yeah. so I feel like he looked back on this like, God, oh, mate, like, and he even told me that when he was moving out, I was like, because you're providing all this stuff for me, it's made it where I haven't had to, take any responsibility in anything yeah so he's like i feel like i need to go do this and my mom wants me back and all this stuff and i was like all right man like and then i told him i was and then i was like i'm not gonna talk to you now because you, you fucking you leave me type of thing but yeah. yeah no he said he'd be back i don't think he's ever coming back me either i he also got hit with his i think it would also sped it up because he got hit with his visa renewal yeah which was expensive yeah i think it was i don't remember how much it was but it was like probably four to six thousand dollars just to stay here mm -hmm. for another two or three years or something like that so it was quite a lot. What 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 other team house drama haven't we spoke about? We covered you moving out, Dylan moving out, Teddy moving out. Because I feel like that's a common a lot. Oh, TK, everyone left. It's like, well, we grew. A lot of people grew up, like you know, yeah. type of thing. Like we couldn't stay children in a team house forever. I might. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I might. Um, but like you know, these are all positive things. Like yeah. Dylan, who had you know, especially you and Dylan. Like I had never really. Well, Dylan a little bit because he discovered Tinder. But before Linda, I don't think I'd ever seen you, you know, have any kind of, like, interaction with a girl in that way. Like, you had friends with girls and stuff like that. But, like, yeah. you know, so when you met Linda and you were happy and you had a girlfriend and, you know, you guys clicked so well together, it wasn't like, oh, Sharp's moving out. TK's dying. It was like, you know, Sharp's, you know, growing up. He's, you know, doing his life type of thing. Move right down the street. <laughs> yeah, let's not get ahead of ourselves. You moved five miles down the road <laughs> uh, into the same apartment complex where Ham has his family. So I almost feel like it's like a good thing. It's yeah. like, you know, like Team Cal where we couldn't be like crazy kids for forever. You know, we, we it's kind of cool that we're documenting this. And I, and I not to say that I'll never go back to vlogging. I, I do think I'll go back. But like I wanted to try a different kind of content um, for a while. And I, I saw podcasts and I just thought they were so interesting that I wanted to, to, to start doing them. Yeah. And I feel like this is something we've talked about for a really long time, but it took someone championing, you know, setting it up, getting it going, and then also bearing the brunt of the cost, setting all this stuff oh, yeah. up. Like, yeah, I, I started out like, it, like my cart was like $2,000 on Amazon, um, just like getting the cameras and the mics and little things like that. And then it ended up being like four or $5,000 to get I everything. I think I saw you tweet it out. You're yeah. Like, you're like, I, don't, I almost have everything for the podcast. Yeah. And I tweeted out the receipt of it, you know, and I felt like, then I was like, oh, dude, this looks like I was bragging. Because everyone, like that, right that day, it happened to be this topic where people were spending all this money to make YouTube videos. Mm -hmm. Like, that's the new, the new, like, meta is to, oh, yeah. to spend so much money making the videos. And here I am tweeting out how much money I'm spending. <laughs> I was like, no, I just wanted to, 
I was like, my fan base, I've been, we've been promising this podcast to them years. Four. I think four or five. Something like, since like New York House, we talked about a podcast. Is it the New York House? I thought we talked. No, yeah, it was the New York House. And then I, like it started like really ramping up when Roger came along. Yeah. Roger's supposed to spearhead the podcast. Yeah. And then when we moved to the new house, the Alpharetta house, the Boogie with a Hoodie house, like we're like, all right, we're doing the podcast. We even like, I remember the. Then we go to Ikea one day with the idea of buying the stuff. But then we went and just goofed off and bought stuffed animals. I don't, I don't know. I just remember the G, the G Fuel thing. The Remember the house tour G Fuel came and did? Mm-hmm. There was the podcast room, and then there was the VR game. Oh, extension. every new house we had, we always had a podcast <laughs> room. This is where we're going to do the podcast. Oh, it's gonna God. Be the, it's going to be the VR gaming station. The VR game. Right outside my room, I was like, yo, what's You the knew VR that at that point, coming? I'm just trying to think of anything to say because we've made so many vlogs. Just yeah. so we're not like, well, this is just going to be a whack empty room where we keep our trash and the, t- the two <laughs> dogs pee and poop. Being. <laughs> this is what, what it ended up being. This is where the dogs are going to shit outside of Sharp's room. Oh, God. I That last house is so destroyed. We are so bad. Well, actually, this house, we haven't been as bad. But the every other team house, we destroy. We've been slowly getting better. So Slowly. The, yeah. the addition of more and more maids is yeah. not even us. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, I was really excited to get this going. Um, if you guys want to listen to this podcast, that was the main thing I heard from people. Like, where is it going to be posted besides YouTube? Um, so I'm going to premiere this on YouTube. Then we're going to, I've worked, hooked up with Audio Boom to get it on iTunes and Spotify everywhere. So if you guys want to go listen to it, I'm not sure I'm new to this. So I think you have to follow a playlist. I have no idea. I can't actually set any of this up until <laughs> I have a podcast to upload. So I'm like talking out of my ass right now. I don't really know. But there's going to be, hopefully, a link below that you can go to follow all that stuff. Thank you for coming on and being technically my first guest. Ham was it, but. Hopefully the audio is all good and everything's worked out. Yeah, well, I'm sure I'll mess with it. But like the, the when I was editing the first one we filmed with Ham, it was just like, oh, dude, I've never. Watching me talk at Ham for two hours was <laughs> like, I felt bad. It was like I was like intellectually beating up on this happy-go-lucky drunk because he was sitting there the whole time I'm talking, he's go, 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 <laughs> drinking. Uh, and yeah, so yeah, that's gonna go into the the learning experience category. But thanks for coming on. I want to have I want to have you guys on like a lot. So I want to have like you know until we can really get a a good like you know guest list and get this thing rolling. I really want to have all the homies on a whole bunch. We got Scotty Tidwell is gonna come here. Um, I think in a few weeks we got some people from G Fuel. Hopefully, I want to get Cliff on here. Duncan from Scuff Gaming is gonna be on. I'm trying to get Hutch out here. I really want to just argue with that guy. Yeah, like I'm gonna have to like look up all his opinions and then research the opposites, <laughs> just because he's just so fun to argue with on Twitter. I can't imagine how fun it would be on, you know, in person. Yeah, but yeah, no. If you guys didn't want any of your other creators, kind of, <laughs> we're gonna have Dom on the podcast eventually, <laughs> as soon as he learns English. Um, <laughs> Simulcast in Spanish. <laughs> But yeah, now if you want to tag a creator or anything like that on, on Twitter and to when this thing goes up, the, the trying to get like let people know because I've been, I feel like everyone knows that we've been talking about doing this for a while, but they might not know if we've ever started it. Yeah. Um. But you know, I, I want to invest in you know this podcast a bit, so we're gonna we're gonna spend some money to get people out here. I had thought of doing it online. I think this personal one on one is better. You know, and then we can't even see what's being recorded, so it's it's just I feel like this intimacy. Not to make it sound weird, <laughs> um, but I just feel like it'd be good for a podcast. But yeah, no, that's it for Costcast number one. <laughs> All right, good deal. Bye.